Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Is Change Good? Today I'm going to be talking about my favorite survival horror genre series, Resident Evil. Well, I can't really call it a survival horror series anymore with the newer titles that came out. The games have gone through so many changes that I don't even consider them to be Resident Evil games anymore. The first Resident Evil came out in 1996 for the Sony PlayStation. It was introduced as a pure survival horror and would be the first of many to come. It had zombies, monsters, blood, challenging gameplay, scary atmospheres, puzzles, and your main objective is to survive. Basically, all the main ingredients for a survival horror game. The game was amazing! Following up as sequels, Resident Evil 2 and 3 came out in 1998 and 1999, and were even bigger hits than the first game. While these titles take place in a different scenario and location, the only change done here gameplay-wise was in Resident Evil 3, where they added a dodge mechanic. It made it a lot easier to dodge attacks from monsters, and while the game itself was pretty difficult already, I can't imagine how much harder it would have been without it. Yeah! Oh fuck, oh fuck! Now here is where things get a bit more interesting. In the year 2000, Capcom released Resident Evil Survivor. This game was more like a spin-off to the series, and was a first-person rail shooter. Instead of exploring the city and backtracking through the area and solving puzzles, you follow a path and take out all the enemies you encounter with your infinite handgun rounds. Later the same year, Resident Evil Code Veronica came out for the Sega Dreamcast and later for the PS2. Staying true to the main series, it kept all the elements of the first three games with a slight change to the camera itself. The camera would now scroll along as the character moved. You still get the fucking annoying camera angles though! In late 2001, Resident Evil Gaiden came out for the Game Boy Color. Wait, what? Yeah, there was a big change here. It became a top-down view action game, which kind of makes sense because the Game Boy Color can't use the same engine as a PlayStation. When the playable character is attacked by a monster, the game would change from a top-down view perspective to a first-person view and requires timing to shoot the zombies. I had no idea that this game even existed until, like, my friend told me a month ago. Needless to say, I was really surprised when I heard about it. I kind of want to try beating that game. Next on the list is Resident Evil Survivor 2, Code Veronica. It came out around the same time as Gaiden, and was a sequel to Resident Evil Survivor. Nothing really changed from the first game, so let's keep going. In 2002, we got a remake for the GameCube of the very first Resident Evil game. More content was added to the game, as well as a really nice graphical upgrade. It looks so pretty! It still uses the same camera, controls, etc. What is new here, is that they added defense items to the game. If you get grabbed by a zombie, the character would use a defense item in order to push the zombie back without taking any damage. These items were consumable and could be found throughout the game. And then there is the Crimson Head Zombie. Basically, if you kill a zombie, his body doesn't go away when you leave the area unlike the previous games. It sticks around and after some time has passed or certain events have triggered, the zombie will revive themselves AGAIN, but this time they are stronger and much, much faster. The only way to prevent this was using some gasoline in the light to burn the zombies after you've killed them. I really like that feature, but I really hate it at the same time. Freaking Crimson Heads. Another game came out the same year titled Resident Evil Zero. This was a prequel to the first game explaining how the events at the mansion occurred and whatnot. The defense items are gone, but they also took out the Crimson Zombies. Phew! But this time, you get to play as two characters at the same time. Huh? Well, not at the same time per se, but you can swap between the two any time, and the second character follows you around wherever you go while covering your ass. You can also tell your partner to stay in a room while you go off alone to explore, but why would you ever do that? Well, there were some parts where you had to split up, otherwise you can't make any progress, but whatever. Plus one for Resident Evil Zero. In 2003, we got Resident Evil Dead Aim. This was another entry to the Survivor series of games, although the game was more of a hybrid between the original and the Survivor games. Here, you moved around in third person, but aimed and fired your weapons in first person. They took out the two-man team feature here. Aww. But it's to be expected since it wasn't considered a mainline Resident Evil game. Once again, another game came out the same year, titled Resident Evil Outbreak. In this game, instead of having a whole campaign to go through, you have five scenarios, or rather levels, and they were hard to beat. You thought the original games were challenging? No, 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 no. They were easy mode compared to Outbreak. This game showed people the true meaning of hell. 
Instead of a health bar, you have an infection display that is always going up, even when you're not getting attacked. If you do get attacked, then it goes up faster than normal. Needless to say, if it goes up to 100%, you are dead. Herbs and sprays slow down the infection, but nothing makes it stop completely, so you basically have a time limit. And to make things even worse, you no longer have the time stopping inventory screen. See, in all previous games, if you check your inventory, you freeze time, or rather pause the game. In Outbreak, when you check your inventory to use an item or change weapons, it is in real time, so the zombies can still get you while you check in your pockets. Another new feature is before each stage, you get to choose a character that have a unique ability, or in some cases, weapons. Besides you, two other AI will help you in the scenario by either bringing you items or fighting off zombies. The game also introduced online multiplayer co-op play to the series. Sweet! A couple of years later, Outbreak File Number 2, a sequel of the game, was released, adding five new levels to play. Pretty much the same game, just more levels. And here is where we introduce the game that changed the series forever. In 2005, we got Resident Evil 4. In this game, everything changed. No more shitty cameras, no more awkward controls, no more free exploration, and no more zombies. Wait, what? No more zombies? The zombies were the bread and butter of the series. How can you take them out? And what did they replace them with? Farmers, monks, and soldiers. What the fuck? The game isn't even scary anymore. Apart from maybe the dogs, but that's it. Oh, look at me! I am Tentacle Man! Get away from me, you hentai freak! I can understand they wanted to take a new direction with the series, but you can't just take out the parts that make up what Resident Evil is. The time-stopping inventory screen makes a return here, which is nice. First and only time making an appearance is the merchant, where you can buy or upgrade your weapons in-game for a price. This guy is the coolest merchant in any game ever. After number 4, we got two more rail shooter games, Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles and Resident Evil The Dark Side Chronicles. Here, you're a lot more restricted as you do not move on your own. The characters move themselves and all you do is shoot. This is more like a rail shooter than Gun Survivor was. Resident Evil 5, 6, and Revelations were games that were released years later and were the same as 4, apart from being different scenarios. 5 also brought back the real-time inventory screen and two-player co-op. At this point, there's only one thing that connects the older Resident Evil games with the newer ones, and that's the characters. That's it. It's not a survival horror series anymore, it's a third-person action shooter game. Don't get me wrong, I really enjoyed Resident Evil 4, 5, and 6. I played them a lot. But they just aren't Resident Evil games. They are their own series. The last two games I will be mentioning are Resident Evil Mercenaries 3D and Operation Raccoon City. Mercenaries was a game mode that starred in Resident Evil 4 and was made into its own game. Operation Raccoon City changed up even more from 5 and Revelations and made it a squad based shooter. They brought back zombies and a lot of creatures from the original games which was awesome but it's still a spin-off action shooter game. So what can we say here? Were the changes good? Well, the little improvements they did along the way were alright. The spin-off games were experiments to give players a different taste, but the biggest change was the jump to 4. They made a new series that shares the same name of Resident Evil. It is completely different, but not bad in any way. It would have been very interesting to see how far they would go if they continued making games like Outbreak. Operation Raccoon City was the closest one to being similar to the originals, but still had a ways to go. We like the newer games, but I believe the fans really want the series to return to its roots, more than anything. So, what do you guys think? Did you like the changes that were made to the series? Let us know in the comments, and if you liked this video, then please share it around. Don't forget to subscribe for more upcoming videos. I'll see you guys next time.